Well, Coach, uh, Wednesday, you guys get some good work in today? We were better today. We were. Uh, it was nicer outside. We had the sun out, and I don't know if it was any warmer, but it seemed like it was warmer just because the sun was out. Jeff, you were talking about the offensive improvement yesterday, and you mentioned just how many times you kind of had to rethink what this team was going to be. Has this season been a particular challenge from a coaching perspective, just trying to keep up with that as it shifted? Um, yeah, they always are. It never just goes as planned. There are certain years where you just stay healthy and the guys you were counting on are out there. So all the stuff you do in the spring and the summer, you just continue to get better. Um, those years are very rare. Uh, that's why it's, it's just hard to have those incredible seasons because of that. So um, it's, it's documenting why this one's so frustrating. It started when Frank and he, you know, that was tough. But it was good. Owen and Eddie got great work, and you saw both those guys are good quarterbacks. So that was a benefit. But still, JT was going to be back. And when we realized he wasn't, we had to really, you know, shuffle some things around. And uh, defensively, when we got all of our guys out there, we were really good. And when we were missing a few of them, uh, we took some step backs back. Uh, got our kicker, you know, and got that situated. Our kickoff guy, our kicker, you know, just punt returner, kick returner, just all those things that you got to get situated. And we've kind of got a handle on all that right now. Uh, but then you get guys with targeting penalties, which I, I misunderstood JJ's question yesterday when he said three kids got ejected. I was thinking like the officials threw them out. We had one, but we had two for targeting. So that stuff always comes up. But uh, yeah, so that's what I meant. How do you compare this this season to last year in terms of the adjustments you guys have had to make? I know last year it was the offensive line, and it seemed like you had to reinvent the offense a couple times. Yeah, well, last year we didn't have hardly anybody left on the line, so we went straight. We were we threw it all the time, to be honest with you. We ran it rarely. And then when we got our line kind of put back together at the end of the year, we went back to what we want to be, which is a, a balanced offense. And and this year we're we're, we're closer. Uh, we're getting closer. Uh, just getting Ty Key established on what his role is going to be and what Josh's role is and this new look of us. And then who is that third one going to be? And, and then Willie and obviously McEwen have really stepped up and Amador is really coming on. So all those just things that uh, – and I know fans and probably y'all too are like, well, why didn't you anticipate all that? Well, you know, when you go by the best information you can be given and the information we were given was JT is going to be ready to go game one. Well, when you lose a third round – draft pick that's uncoverable that they're going to have to tilt the whole coverage to so you plan your whole offseason that way and you don't have that uh, you got to readjust how's Makai doing in his recovery any closer to coming back you know it's been slower than we anticipated to be honest with you and uh, we, we really thought we would have him back about now and it doesn't look like it's gonna happen not gonna happen this week or not gonna happen this year um I know for sure this week how about Dan Dishman? I know he was also sort of on a trajectory to be ready right in late in the season. Again, <coughs> similar. Uh, we thought he'd be ready by now, and he's he's closer than Mackay. Uh, he's closer than Mackay. Jeff, I think it's been 10 years since the Roadrunners have won a game in the DFW Metroplex. You got a monkey off your back in Florida a few weeks ago. You think uh, you guys got another one in you this week? I hope so. I mean, that's the plan. I mean, we're, we don't ever go anywhere. Just go show up and get beat. Uh, but you're right. You know, I didn't really realize all that, but you and Andy Everett are great. It always reminded me of all of these uh, negative things. So uh, it is what it is. You know, it's just you just can't look into that kind of stuff too much. Like, what can we do to get better today? And I know y'all get tired of hearing that, but we can control the controllable. That's all we really can control. Uh, you can't control the weather. You can't control the opponent. You can't control the officials. So there's just really no reason to talk about it. But. As I say, that's why it's great to have you guys. So y'all gonna always bring that stuff up, and uh, that's why y'all are important. Y'all got a role in all this. We're gonna talk to Owen today. I'm curious what his relationship with Donnie is like. Has Donnie been kind of a leader in that room for you? Owen Pee Wee or Owen McCown? Owen Pee Wee. Owen Pee Wee. Um, and your question was, I'm sorry. Just his relationship with Donnie and Donnie maybe as a leader of him and in that group. You know, uh, Donnie has uh, affected way more players than I even uh, have known. Uh, he loves, Donya loves football. He's very knowledgeable of the game. And uh, I'm sure people will be able to talk about that a lot more than I can. I know they're close. I see them out there all the time, jawing and having fun with each other. They're similar in how they're, they're great playmakers 
and they love football. They love to practice. Like Owen likes to practice. Donya likes to practice. Like they're, they're, they love going to the football field. You can never have enough guys on your team that love football, that have football IQ, and that's the way Pee Wee is, and that's the way Donya is as well. I think for a while it seemed like Donya was a guy who needed to be led through certain instances, and he's kind of turned the corner and become a leader. What's been sort of the shift there? You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, Dadrian used to be the guy in that room, and I think it's just a transformation of Dadrian moves on, and Donya knew his time for him to step up, and he has. And I'm really proud of him, of how he's emotionally better. He presses Pauls a lot quicker. Um, uh, but, you know, I was watching last night uh, late uh, when I got home. Uh, my son Jake's home, and he wanted to watch this uh, – whatever they call him, documentaries, J.J., uh, of David Beckham. And I never knew that Beckham got thrown out in the World Cup with a red card, and his team had to play with 10 the entire game. But you're talking about one of the greatest athletes in the entire world and who's a, you know, much, much more mature at that point in his life. And, uh, and it just reminded me that we all, the greatest athletes in the world, had to press pause. And um, Donye and Pee Wee and all those guys, have just done a better job of pressing pause. And uh, even when T. Haynes made his mistake Saturday at 11.30 at night, the first thing he sent me was how sorry he was, and he said, I wish I would have pushed pause. And uh, that's a good lesson for me. Uh, even when a reporter asks you a question in Tennessee where it might make you upset, you need to press pause. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.